Hey, Tara? Yes? Hey, Jude. Don't yeah. make it bad. Julie, your blowjob. <laughs> so I need to cleanse the palate of the audience. Oh. oh. Don't make me break out the Sir Mix-a-Lot hippo, too. I'll do it. I'll do it. I have my snow globe now. My snow globe is best thing. No. I like oh, big Christ's hugs. sake. We're going to do this whole love. thing tonight. Never let a hug pass me by. You can give high fives or cuddles, but please don't lose those hugs. So, gentlemen, ladies, yeah. you can drive this hippo crazy. Oh, yeah. You made me do that. You made. Oh, oh, well, I made you hurt me. Yes. It's just that you make me so mad sometimes, baby. You got like an Ike and Tina thing going on here, and it's not good. <laughs> Why you make me hurt you? <laughs> So, yeah, we have an interesting little week because, you know, I noticed we'd started drifting into being a little more strangely introspective and finding more interesting news stories and whatnot. And this week, nope! Nope! This week, this week, it's just wall-to-wall -wall solid crazy. hammering those keys i'm a loud typer we've established this i know i'm a very aggressive and i type with two fingers so, i'm gonna get you a mechanical keyboard at some point so i don't know what that is i i have my little flat wireless keyboard <laughs> that has crumbs all over it <laughs> and ah. i type like this well Shall we get to the nonsense? Because we have a large collection. Ooh, a smorgasbord of nonsense. Each week, Catherine and the Radio Dead Air audience go out among the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment. We like to call, what the fuck is wrong with you? And this, you start, you've got the first, I'm giving you the opening one on this one. You sent me this one. <laughs> this is different i i can honestly say what the intro play here um and it seems like you, you know when you, you see the headline it's like you're pretty you're pretty well this was gonna happen at some point aroused rider removed from world naked bike ride yep Cyclists looking to take part in Cambridge. They... What? How was this a surprise? <laughs> it's like all of this. Here's time. what we're gonna do, you guys. You guys. Here's what we're gonna do. This is a great idea. We're gonna get a bunch of naked people to straddle things, and then the first person that gets a little turned on, we're gonna kick them out and call the cops. Well, let me. And already. I can't imagine how riding a bike naked could be at all comfortable. Yeah, there is. That's also just a recipe for fucking disaster. I know. I don't like you fall over, and your nooks and crannies are pretty literal nooks and crannies because bikes have chains and gears and. Whoa, whoa, no! I don't. I don't want to. That no. I've had a bike that's chain. What I'm saying. That's why you don't ride a fucking bike naked. Also, have you like? Are these people aware of how a bike seat works? I'm not sure I've, I could think of something more uncomfortable to do naked. I've had a bike chain bike. I've had a bike chain pop and whip around and grab my leg and oh, that's horrible. oh there was blood it was nasty it was like you know what I, I see fucking bikers like yeah I got road rash I'm like I had my chain I was 12 it wrapped around my leg it, it hurt so I can't even imagine I, I, I dated a dude for like a minute that uh, 
gave me to wear his bike chain necklace. That thing pinches like a motherfucker. Like just little tiny, tiny pieces of your skin get caught in it. And I have little bruises like I had some kind of fucking surgery. But yeah, the, you're, you're, this is one of those things you should have. It's like no one at the planning meeting went, excuse me. Yeah. What if someone pops one? Just well, like, then we will all get very offended indeed. <laughs> We're here to celebrate the human body, not be obscene. And that's the thing, like, I, I don't know what the purpose of the naked bike ride is. I'm assuming it's some hippie bullshit about being free and whatever. Just imagine that so poor like bastard. The first person that that pops a woody, you're gonna call the cops and make a big thing and like and the quotes are amazing. Like I can just see that poor bastard peddling going, naked grandma, naked grandma, dead puppies, dead puppies, naked grandma, naked grandma, dead puppies. <laughs> that they will act on any inappropriate behavior and like i the original link i looked at was like everybody turned around and was gasping and i'm like you are looking at a fucking sea of dicks but one of them is paying attention of dicks the fact that one of them starts to go to work <laughs> like, are only okay when they're floppy yeah that's when they're useless that's when they're least okay uh, well, moving right along, and I guess, okay, I, I think I guess our next one, this one does have video. In fact, let's, let's start with the video. So are, are you aware, you, you know about these self-driving cars, right? This whole thing that this, this initiative that is going down. I do not trust them. I don't trust robots. And you know what? You shouldn't, because I'm about to show you why. Um, this happened, and, and I, I'm going to stress before we see the video, no one was hurt, minor bruising, everyone's okay. Amazingly, everyone's okay. Take a look at this. This is Volvo's new self-driving car, and uh, here's a collection of journalists who are here to see the self-driving car. I'll, I'll, I'll get you, I'll show you the link here. Um, the, all of these journalists are here, to, and here's the car. There's no one behind the I wheel. <laughs> There's no one behind the wheel of the self-driving car, and then all of a sudden, Skynet! Boom! Shaka laka. It's supposed, you know, it's supposed to be showing what what I read when I saw this was it was supposed to be displaying some kind of pedestrian um detection technology that like your car will automatically sense pedestrians and stop. Except, except this car didn't have that technology. <laughs> it's DLC. It's the de pedestrian detection on the on the self-driving car is downloadable content. It's an extra. Cars shouldn't have download. That weirds me out. Car exactly. If, if and you like, look, I don't know how anybody can have seen Terminator or iRobot. Or fucking Avengers 2 and think that we should be pro-robot or start letting machines make decisions. We should not be letting machines make decisions. We should be unplugging them when not in use so they don't fucking go maximum overdrive on our sorry asses. And, and people in the no. channel are going, this, bit, if this is an optional feature? No, no. This is a premium feature. You have to pay for it. You have to pay to run over pedestrians exactly like you did yesterday. You you have to pay extra for it not to hit people. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. The cat just tried to climb in Dan's lap and fell right on her ass. She just ate it. Okay, the channel wise guy. I got no brakes to slow me down. Oh, <laughs> lovely. Lovely. Very nice. Yeah. You can't trust technology, man. I mean, how could you? This is not fucking optional. This is kind of, if you're going to have a car and let it go by itself all over the fucking place, seeing and understanding there are people in front of it and it should maybe stop is not optional. Well, it depends on where you're driving, because, <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Have you ever driven in the Bronx? Yes. 
The Bronx is an entire borough comprised of the worst pedestrians in the world. It's like they took everybody who didn't understand how to how to walk and confined them to one borough. And they will just dart the fuck out from behind a truck with a stroller. So I'm walking here! Not for long. Maybe it would help with the natural selection process <laughs> in some places. Oh, we have, and speaking of more, we have we have more motor vehicle. I, well, I guess you'd call this a motor vehicle. I'm not I'm not sure if this really counts as a motor vehicle. I think, remember Second? a while? No, no. Remember a while back when those ladies stole the uh, the, the 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 um from Walmart the 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 carts they give people the handicapped the handy cart and they tried to escape on them. I don't think that's the politically correct name for it, but. You know. Uh, well, yeah, and you'd think, well, that's that's not going to work, and it still doesn't. Ros robbery suspect tries to get away on stolen wheelchair. Robbery robber steals elderly man's wheelchair. San Diego, a 54 year old man allegedly broke into a man's Hillcrest apartment early Thursday and rode off on his stolen electric wheelchair was arrested nearby after being bitten by a police dog. Stanley uh, McCurry allegedly confronted the 79-year-old resident, uh, pushed him out of his wheelchair, and took his phone. Residents have minor injuries. He's okay. McCurry attempted to ride the electric wheelchair to freedom, but police officers caught up to him a few blocks away. He then ditched the wheelchair and tried to run off, but was bitten by a police dog. <clears throat> so... There, there is almost certainly, there has been added a circle of hell since Dante's Inferno for people who steal fucking wheelchairs or the like. I, like that's just, how big of an asshole do you have to be? I, I haven't used this in, in forever, but I have to for this song. Is it a douche quake? That's, that's the wrong thing. Damn it! And one of those things go like two miles an hour anyway? Yeah. Ah, oh, I can't find it. Where, oh, where, where it is? Uh... Live, everybody! Oh, fuck it. Ooh, you touch my tra-la-la. Cause that, that is a fucking, that is a fucking do- I can't do it very well. That is a fucking douche quake. You jackass. Yeah. You like, amazing. You gotta be a pretty big asshole. You stole you 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 stole his Push phone man out of his wheelchair and you fucking took it. And his phone. And then tried so to even call for help. Let's hope he had a life alert. And then tried to escape. Hey yo, guess what? Got some new wheels! Come hook up with me. It goes about two miles an hour. Yeah, they, 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 you know, my father in his... It's not a fucking Vespa. My father in his later years was, of course, having trouble getting around. Emphysema will do that to you. COPD, it's, it's, it fucks you up. You can't really walk. So he had to get one of those, um, those little riding motorized wheel th chair things. And I had to move it around sometimes because we'd have to get, like, the, the lawnmower out of the, out of the shed. So you'd have to unpark it and put it back. That thing don't go very fast. No. I mean... Because why would it need to? You can crank it up. I remember I was at Dragon Con one year, and Anne McCaffrey, she is one of the the venerable I've old... I've heard this story. Yeah, she, a good one. she was a venerable old lady of um, science fiction. Wonderful woman. Loved her to death. Um, And she had one of these writing accessory things, but... She was one of the best science fiction writers of her day, and yet could not understand that the little turtle image meant slow, and the little rabbit image meant fast. And she had it clicked all the way up to rabbit, and she rabbit was just cuter. she was just gunning it through the halls. There was like stormtroopers and hobbits just getting out the fucking way. Cause I'm gonna I'm gonna bet she did understand that. You know what? She probably did. <laughs> and just thought that shit was hilarious. <laughs> I wrote the Dragon Riders of Perm, bitch. Get out my way. Witches. Get out my way. 
Don't don't steal old people's food. Oh, we have more motor ve vehicular bullshit. Okay. When it's this week it's planes, well, trains, and automobiles. Yeah, kinda. Okay. Have you ever been driving and had some sort of drink and dropped it? Yes. I have. Actually, I spilled a giant cherry Slurpee <laughs> on the passenger side carpet of my ex-husband's car three weeks after he bought it. Before, okay. And that was before we started dating and he asked me out anyway. So I suppose he should have been prepared. So you were, but you, have you, you've been doing this while driving at some point, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. And you, and you dropped something. What's the thing you're not supposed to do? Take your hands off the eyes off the road and your hands off the wheel and freak the fuck out. And, and try and pick it up. You're not supposed to, if you drop it, you wait till you stop and then, well. You pull over. That's a rule for those of us in the private sector. And also for people who do that shit for a living. Oh no. Nobody hurt, minor injuries. Bus driver drops water bottle, crashes bus on I-5 trying to retrieve it. Marion County, Oregon. A commercial bus rolled over. I'm gonna try and make the picture bigger so you can see what the fuck he did. Look at that shit. Look at it. Commercial bus rolled over on Interstate 5 Sending three people to the hospital. Everyone's fine. Um, passengers told officers the bus driver, Jack Heisler, 72, of Staten, dropped a water bottle and tried retrieving it off the floor when he lost control of the bus and crossed the center median. The bus broke through the cable barrier and crossed the northbound lanes, then left the roadway and rolled onto the driver's side. Heisler and both uh, passengers transport to the hospital for minor injuries. Oh, it, it, amazingly enough, this it, uh, Michael Griffin, 62, was driving his 95 Saturn northbound just before the crash. When the bus broke through the barrier, it struck Griffin's vehicle. That's the car I wrecked my ex-husband's rug. He was uninjured. Was 96 Saturn. He smashed in this oh, other guy. Saturn? Yeah. He smashed in this other guy. He's okay. He's fine. Completely uninjured. This is a fucking miracle. No one is dead. Yeah. This is like, you know, was the angel of Dude, death. We were going to hit a red light eventually. <laughs> like there was going to be a stop sign or a red light within the next couple miles, almost certainly. This this was like the angel of death was taking a break, was like in the shitter for like five minutes. Yeah. And he gets back. He's like, OK, what I miss? What I miss? Oh, oh fuck. I'm going to get another write up. I never live this time. Fuck. I'm never going to live this down. I just, and you have to imagine the poor passengers was like, oh, give me a minute. No, it's just down here. I'll get it. I, I can see it. I can, would you come? You, you take, can you take the wheel for a sec? Lady, if you stop Actually, screaming. I watched an episode of Mythbusters where they tested that, whether like you could team drive with one person working the pedals and one the wheel they did pretty well <laughs> well you have to ask first you like it when somebody knows you can't just that. spring that one on someone can't be like guess what right. game we're you playing want you want your tag teamer to be aware <laughs> motherfucker Oh, oh God, it just keeps getting worse. Oh God, it gets worse. We're, we're off to Florida now. Um, it's oh, Florida. And it's been a while since we've had one of these stories. But wow, is it making a comeback with a vengeance? Okay, let's go through our recurring themes here, Tara. What's the first one off the top of your head? No one wants to see your dick. Okay, yeah. I'm going to see the naked bike ride. Uh, but then it shouldn't be working. Apparently, yeah. Uh, that's not a pocket. Not a pocket, yeah. Okay. Meat stuffs don't go in your pants. Okay, there we go. And not just meat stuff. Just the, the whole trying to put things in your pants. 
It's been a while. But it always seems to be meat stuffs. I don't know why. People like to steal meat stuffs in their pants. Yeah, well, um, this guy thought a little bit bigger. Florida man caught trying to stuff AK-47 in his pants during an attempted oh store theft. Florida man is facing grand theft charges related to an unusual shoplifting attempt inside a firearm store. Fort Lauderdale native uh, Marlon Paul Alvarez spent one and a half hours Tuesday inside Public Pawn and Gun. Um, surveillance video has been released that show Alvarez eventually taking a liking to an AK-47, stuffing it down his pants and tucking it underneath a sweater. Moments later, he changed his mind and traded the AK-47 for a different assault rifle. When it said he changed his mind, I was like, oh, okay, he thought this was not a good idea. No, no, he wanted a different model. By the time he left, the store owner says, I noticed a bulge in his pants, so I followed him out. You don't say. He was like, no, I'm just happy to see you. <laughs> you don't. Mother of God! I'm not, I don't know a ton about guns, but AK-47s are pretty big, correct? Yes! AK-47 is a big gun? As like, long as your arm weird. and then some. Yeah. You can't just shove that down your pants and expect to walk out of somewhere. That's not gonna work. I, you know, like, even though it is in a gun store, I... There's a rule among gun owners. My father taught me this. There is a or always assume that a weapon is loaded. Yes, he says that too. With, with a gun, you always check no matter what. Yeah, always assume no matter what that any weapon, any any firearm is loaded. That especially means a firearm you're gonna put in your pants. I never under you know. I think I've said this before. I never understand it in like cop movies and cop shows where they shove the gun down the front of their pants. Cause I'm like, dude, is there a place you less like a stray bullet than right in your balls? Cause I'm thinking there isn't like, like that, um, <laughs> a football player for the New York giants shot himself in the fucking leg that way. Cause he was in a nightclub, shoved his gun down the front of his sweatpants, killed yeah. his career, shot himself in the fucking leg. Like, that's why, that's like the worst idea possible. That's the worst storage place. Space Pope. That's like the storing channel. your pencil in your ear. Space Pope in the channel says, this is my rifle. This is my gun. No, you've got those backwards. You've got those backwards. One is for fighting. One is for fun. No, 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 no. It's wrong. <laughs> wrong. You're, you're doing it wrong. Ugh. Also, just, you know, if you're going to steal something by shoving it down your pants, aim a little smaller. Obviously, you're comp cons compensating for something, but... Yeah, notice the bulge in his... Of course! Look, they're going to... You I don't, you don't come in there and go out without... Dicks aren't shaped like that. No. If dicks were shaped like that, men would get... If your dick is shaped like that, see your doctor. Oh, yeah. Because something has gone awry in that, Dicktown. That is, that's not, that's not, that's, yes. That's not normal. Oh, okay. This next one, this just, every, this is a, tr all right, this next story. It's not a literal train wreck, but it's a train wreck. Oh, you know, we, we've been having so much in the news about bad interactions with police. This could have gotten so horrible so many different ways and it's already horrible enough woman faces bribery charge for lick offer wait for it a louisiana woman is facing public bribery charges after allegedly making an indecent proposal to a cop who arrested her for pummeling her live-in boyfriend diane thomas 52 was busted earlier this month for punching her bow in the face multiple times, scratching with her fingernails during a confrontation. Okay. After Thomas was handcuffed, she told Corporal Chris Ballard that she could not go to jail since, quote, she has a good job. At that point, Thomas allegedly made Ballard an offer he 
would refuse. Quote, if you won't take me to jail, I will get on my knees right now. Officer, I will even lick your butthole. Now, there's the first thing that came to mind in this is if this is the type of officer who would accept getting their butt licked in order to let you go, you're probably in a lot more trouble than just getting arrested. You might not want to put that out there as you're starting. You know, I'm just as thinking cops are either running around a lot or sitting in their car. <laughs> oh, God, you're trying to imagine the experience. Neither no, of those create pleasant butt licking situations. So don't draw that picture. Like that's that's desperation because there's almost certainly some swamp ass going on there. I I just it <sighs> that's in your police record. That's that shit's forever. And Mulchan makes a good point. Who goes right to that offer? Like, <laughs> you, know, you gotta work up to that, man. Negotiate. You don't go right for the kill. You gotta leave some room for negotiation. <laughs> You start at a handy and you work from there. Right. <laughs> you don't go straight to tossing the salad. You, you you work up to it. Oh my god. They're so mad at me right now. Yes! I understand why! Of course they are! I have done my job. Why would you I've angered the audience once again? <laughs> Why would you go straight there? Mother of yeah, that's, that's like the end of negotiations. That's not your jumping off point. No, no, that's that's not, you know, you, you, you don't know. You don't understand haggling very well, do you? Yeah. Oh, finally, tonight we have some grand, old-fashioned, flat-out balls of the wall crazy. I, 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 you know what? No one was hurt. No one was arrested. They should have been. But this is probably the most beautiful picture in my mind painted by this headline. Thirty people kicked the fight over hotel waffle maker gets thirty people. Kicked out. <laughs> I'm hurting what? myself here. <clears throat> Excuse me. A fight over a self-serve waffle maker got heated at a West Michigan hotel over Memorial Day weekend. Yeah, you're going to Michigan this week. Don't have the waffles. <laughs> I can't go to Michigan to, ba to bail you out of jail. <laughs> Mason County, Michigan Sheriff Kim Cole said 30 people were forced to leave America's Best Value Inn following the scuffle. Apparently, there was a line at the waffle maker, and a couple of people felt an individual had cut in line, sparked a verbal argument. One lady walked up to another lady, asked her if she was in line for the waffle maker, and the lady never answered her. So the first lady went and made a waffle, and when she went to go and take it, this other gal tried to take it from her, and that started a fight over the waffle. Cole said prejudices related to ethnicity of the one woman in the argument may have played a role in the fight. The second lady was of Middle Eastern descent and made some comments about her not understanding English. Lego my ego? Mm. Just a commercial. Yes! I was waiting for it. It had, it was coming... Lego. I'm gonna be really disappointed if nobody actually got hit with the hot water. <laughs> <laughs> because if that waffle iron didn't get turned into a melee weapon, then just nobody was nobody was trying. It's a waffle. I know. <laughs> it's a... like really. And don't don't be fooled. 
by that picture there, okay? Because when we were making the uh, the movie with Lewis, the top fourth wall movie, we had one of those waffle makers in the hotel. You know, they they served breakfast in the morning, went down, and they're like, you get this little styrofoam cup, like you put the coffee in, only instead of coffee, you you fill it with the waffle goop. And it comes out like it's it's not the most appetizing thing in the world. It's like, you know, the ketchup dispensers at Wendy's? It's kind of like that, only goop. <laughs> and then you dump it in the griddle. And what comes out? It's not awful, but it's not it's not that that pic that that it's picture not a is a beautiful like, fluffy Belgian waffle with strawberries. No, that's a that's a lie. I would I saw something on Pinterest about putting hash browns in a waffle iron, and I really want to do it now. It looks amazing. <laughs> that's off the topic. I may fight someone, depending on how hungry I was, for that picture. I may fight someone for what's in that picture, depending on, you know, it, I ain't gonna fight somebody for no hotel waffle. Like, just have a bagel. Just it's have not a that And this is, I tweeted this earlier today, like, I feel like so many problems in the world could be avoided if we would just stop and ask ourselves two questions more often. One. Is this really worth my energy? Mm -hmm. Two, is this any of my goddamn business? <laughs> and if you can't answer yes to either of those, just walk away. You're free. Like, You're just free. Leave it alone. If it's none of your goddamn business, and then you have to think like, is this really is this really the hill I want to die on? No, I'm go. Do you really want to die on Ego Hill? <laughs> And I love the last line of this story. Do you want to lose your? Do you do you want to find your thrill on Blueberry Ego Hill? Oh uh, no! Don't go! No! 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 Because then you say the blue, and we're waffles, and we're gonna go someplace nobody wants to go. And oh right, I forgot don't. we're on the internet. We are. We are. The last line of this story is what pisses me off. We had two thirds of our road patrol tied up on this fiasco. <laughs> really? Dan says assault and battery. <laughs> no. Two thirds of the road patrol. Like, <laughs> what the fuck happened? Have here? you ever seen Super Troopers by chance? I, to the surprise of no one, have not. Anyone out there who's seen Super Troopers, you're going, yeah, this sounds like a normal day for them. Breaking up a fight over waffles. Yeah. Can you imagine, like, back at the station at the end of this? <laughs> about, like, the next shift comes in and they're like, so how was the night shift, guys? I'm never eating fucking waffles again, man. Like, you want to go to Denny's? No. Dispatch to all <laughs> officers. Dispatch to all officers. We have a fight over waffles. At a motel. We have a waffle riot. P.S. I quit. Can you imagine being the person working in that hotel? Like the, <laughs> poor, like the poor front desk agent at the hotel watching this shit go down over the free breakfast. Man, like, if I was, I'd just be, okay, Tara. There's just no way that's worth it. Tara, if you've worked at a hotel for any length of time, a waffle riot is the least of the horrible. You've seen four rooms, right? No. No. Okay, well, we put it this way. We were at the Purple Hotel. Yeah. If you've been in a hotel for any length of time, a waffle riot, Wyatt, that's that's like your version of the Muppet Show. <laughs> that shit is Sesame Street. That is tame. You're fine with that. You got popcorn. You're kicking your feet back. A fucking waffle riot. I guess, I guess, yeah, that, that's, that, that is, you know, that's a wonderful rule for life. The first thing we've learned this week, ask yourself two questions. Two is, questions. Is this, Save us all a lot of trouble. Is this my business? And? Is this worth my energy? And if you can't answer yes to both questions, just walk away. Like the great humongous said in The Road Warrior, just walk away. Just walk away. Kelly Clarkson said that too. <laughs> we have two totally different frames of reference on that one. Um, 
we've learned that when you're trying to weasel out of being arrested, do not go straight to analingus. You got to leave somewhere to go. In all negotiations, you have to leave somewhere to go. You cannot go straight for the kill in round one negotiations. Because... You open with the handy. Open with. <laughs> I'm t I won't do it, but I'm so tempted to title this week Open with the Handy. <laughs> you should. Oh, I'm just not sure Those that... the comments will go. Oh, Open with the Handy. We've learned that... A case, uh, all firearms, presume all firearms to be loaded especially ones you intend to put in your pants. And also, don't put firearms in your pants. Don't put firearms in your pants. And if you're going to steal a firearm by method of putting in your pants, choose a small one. Little. This is, this is not the time to dream about your porn career. Just, you know. We've learned... Think, think before you stuff. We've learned if you drop your water bottle while driving, let that shit go. Yeah. Especially if what you're driving could, in other circumstances, qualify as a war machine. I mean, if you're dying of dehydration, cool, but then you shouldn't be driving anyway. You shouldn't. So, you know. Oh, you can see the big old white stripe in my bangs. I'm old, everybody. Oh, You're not. You're the same fucking age I am. Um, <laughs> old lady with white hair. We've learned that... Wheelchairs are neither effective getaway vehicles, nor should they be the object of the robbery. No, that's fucking horrible. Don't, you, you living penis, don't. <laughs> you living penis. And speaking of living penises, yes, if we, you're going to do the naked bike ride. You accept the fact that you are going. That motherfucker asleep. Well, if you're going to make a right bike ride, you're going to see a dick. You may not want to see a dick, but that's the trade-off for going to the naked bike ride. But everybody's ride. going to be very upset indeed if your dick starts to do its job. This is a recreational event. That dick has taken the day off. And finally, we've learned we do not let the robots make the decisions, oh. especially the self-driving fucking cars. No, Ultron is going to get us all in like five years. This is some, this is some Skynet shit. Not, I thought Tara was in her twenties. Oh, bless you. I'm 38. Man, mother, motherfucker, not murdering humans is not DLC content. <laughs> but it should be. You should have the Grand Theft Auto option in your self-driving car. If you don't want it to kill your grandma, you gotta pay extra. <laughs>